Hey, how's it going? Hey, happy Saturday. Oh, oh man, I messed up already. It's all, it's already messed up. It's all right. I'm going to get rid of that, unselect that. Hey, happy Saturday. How's it going? How's everyone doing? Hope you're having a, a good Saturday. Uh, pretty good Saturday around here so far. Hey, <laughs> Joe Ryan, resub, tier one, 16 months. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll definitely, well, I'll call it out too. PC Geek, you, you also resub, tier one, 18 months, 18 months streak. Man, thank you guys so much. Holy cow, 18 months, the PC Geek head shake. Yeah, sweet emote, by the way. Uh, but Jenna Ryan, thank you so much for the continued support. And uh, uh, PC Geek, thank you so much for the continued support. Um, so yeah, um, I'll, I'll definitely call out follows and everything here in a little bit. I don't know why my lights aren't flashing. They should have flashed, but maybe they will here soon. Um, but we'll, we'll see what's going on. Uh, if not, I have manual controls I can do here. And yeah, something. Anyways, um... Let me see which one you, uh, oh, dark mode. I'm like, why are the lights off? And I'm like, oh, okay, because you hit dark mode. So for some reason, my LED lights, my infrared ones that are controlled via infrared um, are, are struggling this morning. I might need to reboot that thing really quick. Hold on, let me let me go crazy uh, really quick and jump back there. It'll take two seconds. Okay, sorry about that. So we'll we'll see. We'll see if it works. And, and for some reason, I have these infrared controlled lights, and the infrared control lights aren't as as uh, uh, dependable as my ones that are controlled via API and 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 that work through Philips Hue or any other IP uh, based device. These aren't IP based. These are infrared devices. So I have to tell this Broadlink device, hey, send send out this infrared command, and that infrared command will then uh, <laughs> will then trigger things to happen it doesn't always happen i i might need to find a new system we'll see or update the firmware i don't know anyways uh happy saturday how's it going get all that out of the way man thank you guys so much um i'll, I'll call these out and I'll, I'll definitely go through the list here again here in a second uh rich richie saint thanks for the sub prime sub thank you so much for spending your prime sub on me appreciate it uh anti seven thanks for the uh sub prime sub thank you so much for spending your prime sub on me so, as I was saying, uh, Saturday for me is going pretty good, pretty chill one today. Um, excuse me. Um, <laughs> Crack Kitty, cheered 100 bits. Thank you so much. Hype Train, this is, man, this is awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, man, crazy, crazy intros. Thank you. I'm stepping on my shoelaces too. What is going on? I thought it was going to be nice and prepared for today, and, <laughs> and then things go crazy. But thank you. Um, Kai Debram, resub, prime, three months, one month streak. Thank you so much. Happy Saturday. I agree. Happy Saturday. How's everyone doing? Uh, <laughs> I can't even get past the happy Saturday. Thank you so much. Uh, Nam, Nam Uzi. I'm going to go with Nam Uzi. Uh, resub, tier one, two months, two months streak. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for the continued support. And thank you so much for being here on this fine Saturday. So happy Saturday. Um, I, I, I usually start out with the weather. The weather's been a little bit, uh, <laughs> maybe I'll get into the weather. Uh, Dr. Sprite, Risa, Prime, three months. Thank you so much, three month streak. Thank you so much, thank you for the continued support. So uh, weather this week in the Midwest, it's kind of warming up. It's starting to feel like spring. Uh, we're not there yet, but we're getting a taste of it, at least here in the North Midwest. Up here in Minnesota, it's been it's been okay. It's uh, 34 degrees. It was, it's been hanging around mid 30s, right around the freezing point, uh, but not not cold enough to freeze. And so things have been slowly melting. I think we're supposed to get a thunderstorm today or something. I don't know. It'd be awesome. I'm ready for, dude. Kiki Ran, dude. Thank you so much. Wow, the hype train is real hype now. 100%. Dude, Geeky Ram, thank you so much. Uh, gifted five tier one subs. Oh my goodness, you guys. Uh, so, Castle, uh, Linux, Linux Tux, uh, Salvarius, X Techna, and MKTBS. Enjoy your gifted sub from, from Geeky Ram. How's it going, man? How you doing? Uh, glad, glad you're here, and thank you so much for gifting the subs. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And then I'll, I will, I will string. Uh, I'm, I'm terrible at pronouncing uh, that. I'm gonna go with Al String. Al String Risa Prime, two months, two months streak. Thank you so much. Starting the streak, thank you. Thank you. But um, uh, man, man, you guys are blowing me away. Uh, thank you. Um, so as I was saying, weather's been a little bit, little bit uh, 
pretty okay for me. It's starting to melt. Uh, it's getting sloppy out. That's okay. I'm just kind of ready for the snow to be gone. I think most of us are uh, across the Midwest. I think a lot of people are getting very similar weather. I think if you're a little bit southeast of me, you're getting like 60s, upper 60s this weekend, which is like, whoa, like Chicago area and a little bit of little, I need a weather map, Chicago area, Chicago land, and a little bit of little bit uh, east of there is getting 60s, I think, this weekend, which is awesome, awesome. So enjoy it. Anyways, um, <laughs> I, I need a weather map so I could talk about the rest of the Midwest and maybe the world, but who knows, or rest of, rest of the United States and maybe the rest of the world. Uh, but I, I usually pay attention to Midwest because it affects me or my family that's out east. Anyways, um, so outside of that, um, if you've never been here before, I, I don't usually talk that long about the weather and stuff, but there's so many, so many, uh, activities rolling in with subs and follows and I'll, I'll, I'll pick back up and, and talk about those here in a second. Um, but usually if you're new here, we just talk about what we're working on. Um, it's, it's pretty open. It's pretty relaxed. We just talk about things we're working on, either things you need help with, things you're excited about, technology you're using, technology you're questioning or technology you're questioning why you ever started to use it to begin with. Um, all fair game. All fair game. So it's pretty, pretty open. So if you have something you want to talk about, you have something you want to share, a uh, question you have or need just, just some general advice uh, from anyone, throw it in there. Throw it in there. Um, so uh, let's let's get into uh, follows and let's get into other activities that were here that I may have missed. So I'm going to call them out real quick because some of these happened right before the stream started or during. Um, Richie Saint, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Uh, Puga Zone online. I'm going with that. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Elephant, elephant pandas, Jenna Ryan, I called that out. JCX Life, uh, Crack Kitty called that out. Kai Devrin uh, called that out, I think. If not, thanks for the sub. Happy Saturday, I did. Uh, it looks like I called them all out because they were rolling in as I was as I was doing it. If I didn't, I apologize, but I think, I think I called them all out. So I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. So uh let's uh let's let's get into chat come on come on come on come on lower lights lower lights Oof. Oof. lower lights are not working uh i i am gonna do one more thing just because i want those lights to flash and i'm going into my kubernetes cluster really quick i something i don't normally do on stream let me look at this workload <laughs> this is like live debugging of my thing i'm not gonna debug i'm just gonna bounce the service because i have a feeling uh, it might be stuck on something, so let's uh, sure redeploy whatever. That'll that'll t pull the same Docker image and pull it down. So the bot will be offline for about two seconds. So be good, guys. <laughs> Anyways, um, so let's let's get into it. Let's talk about what you guys are talking about. Let's see what um, possibly I can help with, um, and let's let's go from there. First, let's answer who was first. Who was first? I know who was here first because because I I was here first. Uh, and I was testing some stuff. So PC Geek, he was here first. You don't see my emotes. I think I think I might fix that in the future. Um, using this open source uh, chat overlay that I've seen. I mentioned this before. Network Chuck and Tom Lawrence, they use it. I thought it was something that was for YouTube. So I never totally investigated it. Uh, then I realized, hey, it's an open source uh, thing called Twidget. And so I'm going to I'm gonna test it out. Might open a pull request to fix the Twitch stuff. Because YouTube gets a lot of love on that thing. Not so much on Twitch. So I might open a pull request and see if I can fix these emotes. And actually fix the avatar, but that's a little bit tougher. So, anyways, Crack Kitty, hello, hey guys, how's it going? Good to see you. Uh, Noomzy, hello, uh, a lot of hello. Let's go, Pro Cheeseburger, how's it going, man? Hey, Kai Devrim. Wait, wait, no, no, I need to scroll up. Uh, that was uh, Lul Lulsation. Hey, thanks for the follow. Uh, thanks for the prime sub. Thank you so much for spending your prime sub on me. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Candy Blast, I must have missed that one. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, the, the, the chat's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. I got to get used to this. Pro Cheeseburger, let's go. Geeky Rand, yeah. Wow, two weeks <laughs> in a row. I get to be here. Yeah, you are you are a busy man. If you're not automating stuff, you're 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 plowing snow and and birthday parties and and living it up. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Uh, I'm gonna skip over that because that's an emote and it doesn't show up good. Uh, Takano, uh, my S22 Ultra just arrived yesterday. Seems good. Hey. Uh, that sounds awesome. So S22, that's Samsung, I think. Samsung S22. Nice, man. Sorry, I'm trying to tuck in my shoelace because I keep stepping on it and I don't want to tie it right now because uh, I am standing. Um, nice, man. How's it going, Takano? How's it going? Good to see you. Uh, Takano also says, and I'm still trying to figure out what the Cisco switch is doing and why it queries for DNS for time servers every second. Yeah, interesting. I, 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 it might be a setting. Um, if it's not a setting in the UI, you could probably use the CLI to either set that 
or disable it. Maybe you can't disable it. Um, but if uh, if you're worried about it querying some time servers, it's probably querying something external. Um, see if there's a config setting to query something internal. Throw it to a black hole. Uh, throw it to something that doesn't exist or just spin up a quick NTP server on your own network. Uh, that's what I do. Use a Docker container called NTP uh, and it's an NTP time server. And then I point, uh, and then I create a DNS entry and then I point it all internally. Uh, and then that one upstream points to whatever you want it to. It could point to the government, time cloud, Microsoft, Linux, wherever you want it to. Um, and then, so I have all of my machines that try to sync time sync internally at this NTP server. And then that one syncs upstream to, to wherever you want, Cloudflare, whatever you want. Um, but yeah, if for some reason on your Cisco switch, there's, there's no UI for it, uh, you might have to dig into the CLI and do it that way. Uh, and, and, and either disable it, if you want to disable it, you should probably should have time enabled or, or enable it and point it somewhere else. But then also, the, usually Cisco switches or any hardware, dedicated hardware like that, usually have NTP servers built in them too, which is super nice because they have a hardware clock and it's not virtualized. So time, you don't have to worry so much about time drift. Um, let's see, uh, PC Geek, uh, just chilling and relaxing today. Yeah, kind of, kind of me too. Not, not really chilling. My, my version of chilling is like exploring uh, new stuff. <laughs> rather than like uh, 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 creating videos, creating content, I'm working on stuff, but this is like my exploratory phase. Um, I released a video earlier this week. I, 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 <laughs> it was my birthday on Wednesday. I usually, was it Wednesday? Yeah, it was Wednesday. Hey, dude, <laughs> dude, Cyber Knight gifted four tier one subs. Cyber Knight, thank you so much. Jeez, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, so let's see, skill point, uh, random cake, uh, Christ of, Christoph, uh, it's it's Cletus <laughs> and Don M is Cletus and Don M uh, enjoy your gifted sub uh, from Cyber Knight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but what I was saying is, um, so I, I uh, so my birthday was Wednesday. I'm not saying because like, oh, tell me happy birthday. But I had a video in my back pocket that I was gonna release on Monday morning. Um, and then I was talking to my wife, and she was like, why don't you just release it on your birthday? I was like, yeah. That's that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> That's a pretty good idea. <laughs> and so anyways, and, and I wanted to space my stuff out because I just released one on Saturday and I was like, okay, I'll space it out. So anyways, I released one on Wednesday and, um, that's what I was working on. So now I'm in this phase where I'm, I'm in this discovery planning exploratory phase, uh, which is my version of chilling. And I'm working on something that's back there. I had to rip a server out of my rack to put it up here to work on it. So, uh, working on something pretty cool, pretty pretty interesting I'll, I'll say it's interesting to say the least uh it kind of flips uh, a lot of things upside down with with my architecture not sure if it's going to stay uh but i'm exploring it and having fun with it so far because it's super interesting um Sc scanzoa thanks for the follow appreciate it welcome okay so uh let's see impact uh my esxi server isn't picking up my synology i scuzzy link right now for whatever reason boo that stinks that stinks um yeah, I, I I wish I could help with that. It's it's usually pretty straightforward. You set it up on the client, you set up you know your your target um, on the server, and then uh, it should just work. Uh, so I'm I am not sure, and I, I don't have any experience with with Synology. So uh, but it, you know usually it's 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 pretty much the same. Most of them are using the same stuff. So uh, yeah, I wish I could help. Uh, two two. Tukin, <laughs> two Tekken. Uh, thanks for the prime sub. Thank you so much for spending a prime sum with me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, Sigora, hi everybody. How's it going? Uh, Kai Devrim, uh, finally remaking my personal website, making the blog section uh, <laughs> for it is a headache. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I've used a lot of different ways. I've spun up websites in many different ways. Uh, curious what you're using. You, you can go full blown CMS with WordPress or Ghost, or you could go Static Site Generator with Gatsby, Hugo, Jekyll, you name it. Or you can go plain old HTML and CSS and JavaScript, roll your own. Or you could use frameworks like React or Vue. There's so many, so many options uh, to do it. I uh, hope it hope it works out. Blog ones are always the tough one. Um, blog ones are the tough ones because you're going to be creating content over time. And so that that's something I, I've had to figure out multiple times. I, I do run a WordPress blog just for fun. I have for a long time. And then I started to get into static site generators and um, started releasing content, blog-like content through a static site generator. It's my doc site. Uh, so I've done it in many different ways. And I've done it like the super hard way, which is do it in React and try to make a CMS out of React, which is not fun. <laughs> not fun to, to roll that much. 
of your own when you can lean into other open source things that are out there. So, so yeah. Um, wow. Well, I, I, uh, I hope you figure it out. Uh, Geeky Rant waiting on Amazon. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> Aren't we all? Uh, curious what you're getting. Curious what you're getting. I, uh, I, 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 my spend on Amazon last month was pretty low. I was pretty impressed. Uh, usually we buy all kinds of stuff there. I, I, you know, I tried to spread it out. Last month was pretty low, but I feel like this month is going to ramp back up. Uh, JCX Life, uh, finally cut the live stream for a change. Hey, how's it going? JCX, good to see you. Welcome. Thank you. Glad you're here. Uh, let's see. Jenna Ryan, uh, spent more time than I care to admit finding out the firewall was helping me with DNS this week. <laughs> Isn't that always great? It is always DNS. Uh, most of your problems are, are, are DNS at the root. Um, and, uh, anything else is, is, is yeah, it, 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 it's always DNS. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, JCX Life, uh, watching that footage of installing servers uh, into the rack, uh, they slide in a lot smoother than mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so that that the 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 intro trailer, yeah, they um, they slide in pretty good. They slide in pretty good. I have real rails on two of my servers. The rest are just you know those shelves, rack r shelf things that everyone gets. Uh, I I've settled on a specific brand and they they work really good. Now it's just like. You know, anytime someone asks me, you know, what, what do you use? I, I always use those. It's funny when I when I go back to that link, it's like, you purchased this five times. I'm like, yeah, these must be the ones. <laughs> these must be the ones. But uh, yeah, they're 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 a little more expensive than I think they should be for a piece of metal. But I mean, they know they're they're going after a niche market. Uh, I think they're 20, 30 bucks or something like that. But they're pretty versatile, uh, pretty versatile for sure. Uh, Geeky Rand uh, rented a ditch which last night and dug a ditch from the house from the shed this morning, put a mailbox post, and now just chilling. Man, busy morning. Busy morning. Wish I could say I did that much this morning. Didn't do too much. I, I pulled a server out of my rack and brought it up here. That is not even close to digging a trench or digging a ditch and putting in a mailbox. Not at all. Hopefully the ground, you're, you're, I think you're a little southwest of me, so the ground's probably... Pretty moist and uh, uh, not frozen anymore. So, man, you've been busy. Busy, busy morning for you. Uh, Cyber Knight, uh, finally got my R620 up and running with a K3S cluster microservices uh, dev. <laughs> microservices development going on. Nice. Yeah, nice. It's always a good feeling when you get your cluster up and going. Uh, and it's a great feeling once you start deploying stuff to that cluster. That's when you start realizing the value or, or realizing, yeah, the, the value you're getting from a lot of your, your infrastructures once you start running workloads on it. Um, and, then, and then I think there's a couple other times, there's a couple other like key moments um, when you run a Kubernetes cluster where you're like, okay, that's why I run a Kubernetes cluster. Those two other places for me are storage, centralized storage, centralized monitoring and logging. Cause then it's like, all right, like, you know, um, you know, I, I, I struggled through getting storage going or logging going, but now my whole entire cluster has it. And it's like, it's it's awesome to have things very centralized and uh, HA for sure. Crack Kitty, uh, I'm on a marathon VLAN configuration journey. All right, I like it. I like it. Small detour, bought an Aruba 2500 port PoE. Now learning how to configure that thanks to uh, Lex Parism, uh, Salvarius Maven, and a few others uh, for their help. I totally agree. One, that's awesome. I, I, I encourage you to keep going down this this VLAN path, this journey that you're on. It's it's uh, might not seem worth it, but once you get there, it's pretty awesome. It's it's pretty great <laughs> uh, to have things you know organized and segmented it uh, segmented for 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 many reasons. Um, but I I totally echo your sentiment on helping people from the Discord community. It's it's pretty incredible. You know, I, I put a post up the other day and I really meant it that like, I'm so, so thankful for everyone that's, that's in the discord that helps out that even just there to lurk or share ideas or ask questions. Cause even questions spark ideas. Uh, Martin, dude, thank you so much. 300 bits. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martin. 2121. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, but even, even those that just lurk, it's super, super duper helpful. Hey, how Weston. Thanks for the, thanks for the rate. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for the rate. Oh, my Contra guy, he works. He's he's also there. That's from Contra. Still rem remember the Konami code by heart. Still remember it. I still remember even the code to, to Mike Tyson's punch out. I can rattle it off right here without looking at the internet. Uh, 007373-5963. <laughs> Those were my games when I was younger. Uh, Contra and Mike Tyson's punch out. And it was later changed to punch out because, you know, Mike Tyson, all the controversy around him. But anyways, to get to Mike Tyson, that's the code in case you were wondering. <laughs> Still remember it. Play a lot of Nintendo growing up. 
Uh, but going back to that, <laughs> what I was saying about Discord community and just, just people being super helpful, and even if you're there just to lurk, uh, I, I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, there was a, a, a whole entire thread that came out, um, I think, the other night that was just someone was just lurking. I was asking a question, and it started a huge, long conversation about TVs and, and, and all kinds of like interesting stuff, things that I thought, like, there's no way someone has, has this TV or has thought about this TV. Of course, someone from the community had it and had a great conversation. So I encourage you to, 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 to lurk. And if you want to chat, totally fine too. But anyways, uh, my point being that um, really appreciate the help from everyone because it's like incredible, like having this large, you know, community of, of, of people who are interested in, in technology. You, we just, we all benefit from the collected knowledge of everyone. So thank you. Uh, Dr. Spray, hi everyone. Uh, Kai Devram, uh, 51 viewers already. All right, I don't know what we're up to. I, I try not to look at the number. I do have a number there. I try not to look at it. My wife, when I'm done, always says, how, how many people came? And I'm, you know, I, I don't know, cause I, I look at the number every now and then, but I have no idea. <laughs> so I, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, thank you. That was the early crew too. Early crew, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, Roller said, hello. Uh, let's see, uh, Mr. GM Robo, uh, still trying to get Ventoy to work. <laughs> oh man, Ventoy is pretty easy. I actually just used it on, on that machine back there. Um, so Ventoy should be pretty easy. If you're not familiar with Ventoy, it's this bootable USB disc. Um, and that might sound like old and boring, but the nice part about Ventoy is you can copy ISOs directly on that bootable image and then boot any of those ISOs. So it's, it's, it's really nice for flashing machines, uh, putting OSs on machines. If you need to plug in a USB drive, you don't have to flash it every single time. You just load it all up with tons of ISOs. I think I have like 15 on the one I just used. Copy and paste it in there, boot off of that. Then you select your ISO you want to boot from, and that's it. It's like your last USB drive you'll ever need. Um, and so I'm, and it's unfortunate you can't get it working. I know that there's a, there's a lot of people who want to make it persistent too, to be able to boot off that OS and make it more like a live bootable USB. That's, that's pretty complicated. <laughs> uh, I haven't tried it myself, but I, I know that it's a thing, or at least people ask, uh, ask about it a lot, at least on YouTube. Um, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. I haven't had a need for it to be able to boot off a live image. Usually I'll put a live ISO on that, uh, that uh, uh, Ventor USB drive and then boot from that and then I have my live ISO, but I never want things to persist. Usually it's, it's just to test something out, troubleshoot something, wipe a drive, that's, that sort of thing. So, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, I wish I could help. Oh, well, uh, Preggy, I think that's Preggy. Uh, do you move your backups uh, from Plex to Plex scale at all? Um, if not, thoughts on how to? Uh, do I move my my backups from Plex to Plex scale at all. Um, I, I don't even know, like what backups? Am I missing out on something? I, I, I don't even know. I I don't know. I, I mean, um, I, I see what you mean. I see, I see what you mean. This is probably about TrueNet scale. Okay, so I'm like, Plex scale? Is this like some new product or something I don't know about? Uh, Real quick, uh, Tom, Tom Schubel Bauer. I think that I said that right. I appreciate it. Thanks for the follow. If I didn't say it right, I'm sorry, but I still appreciate the follow. Thanks for, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Um, so your question is, uh, do you move your backups from Plex to Plex scale at all? If, if Plex via TrueNet scale, uh, if not thoughts on how to, um, uh, so, uh, it, it it just depends. So I, I, I did release a video um, about uh, Plex and Plex apps and, and, and what they mean on TrueNAS scale and how it's Kubernetes, but not really the Kubernetes you think. And it's also Docker, but not really the Docker you think. It doesn't make it a lesser product. It's just different. Um, and so I think your question is like, how would I move something from Plex somewhere else, maybe in a Docker container? Uh, to to Plex there. I mean, there there is no easy path. There's no import or migrate. Uh, if you're on jails before, you're gonna just have to copy your configuration, reapply it to the new configuration, and it should be done. Um, if you if you're your if you have your Plex media or whatever, uh, if you have your media on your NAS, um, when you pick your when you set your configuration for your storage location for your videos or recorded TV or anything like that, you'll just pick that in the UI, you'll pick the data set where it already lives, and you should be good. 
So there's no, there's no, there's no easy button. Unfortunately, if you ran jails on, on TrueNAS core, there's no easy button. Uh, so back up the configuration before you do any kind of migration. If you're moving from plain old Docker to it, um, you know, you, you have a little bit more, um, I guess I don't want to say a benefit, but you, you've already kind of done the, uh, filled out a lot of those, those forms either in, in YAML or in Portainer. And so, um, you could copy and paste those values, but there's no, there's no easy way. I mean, it's, it, it's sit down, look at the old values, paste them into the new values, make sure your volumes map to that new container on Trina scale. So wish there was, uh, how'd you get your server to insert real smooth? Might take a huge shove also, uh, more than two seconds. <laughs> yeah. I, like I said, like, uh, I, I practice it for that shot. No, I didn't really. Um, like I said, they're, they're, they're just these rails that, uh, I, again, they're probably, if you go to my kit uh, site, they're there. Um, they're just the, you know, the little rail shelves and, you know, I just pick it up and kind of push it in. Um, my one use servers though have real rails. So uh, those, those super micro servers came with rails. I didn't even know they were gonna come with rails and they did. So it was a pleasant surprise. Um, and those are, those are buttery smooth, buttery smooth. Uh, Dr. Sprite, I subscribed, but it didn't say it weird. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I see it. I see it. So it might have been delayed. I do see it. And I called it out. Dr. Sprite, resub, prime three months. Uh, I apologize. If you met in chat, I disabled it a lot in that chat. I disabled my bot saying thank you because it was just kind of flooding the chat. Now with this new tool that I'm using, it just, it makes it even harder to track down what I even need to say. Uh, all swing. Uh, glad you caught the stream. I'm glad you did too. Thank you. Thank you um gm robo guys please he's got to catch up <laughs> i don't have to catch up i will catch up i always catch up towards the end so <laughs> uh let's see uh mr extremely uh here my home lab hpz 420 and a dell dc 7800 also a tp link re 450 to bridge ethernet uh and to wi-fi back to ethernet nice Sounds like you got a nice little server uh, farm or, or home lab going on. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. Level four hype train. Did we get to level four? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Uh, anti seven, uh, 80 degrees in Oklahoma. Jeez, that's, that's too warm for me. Once, uh, once it gets above, you know, 70, I'm kind of like, yeah, it's kind of warm. <laughs> I don't want to go directly from heat to air conditioning. I, I imagine if it was, if it was 80, at least here for one day, it's not going to hang around too long, but oof. Uh, Lord, Lord Garden Gnome. Uh, nice. New England is still chilly, but we have plenty of rain coming this week. Yeah, same here. We're, I think we're going to get a thunderstorm soon. A thunder rain or thunder snow or something is coming. I got, uh, already an alert saying it's gonna, it's gonna snow in, in, uh, I don't know, 15 minutes or something like that. Um, but it's not really going to be snow. It might be thunder snow. So we'll see. It's going to be interesting. Uh, Mr. Extremely links not working. No, links are disabled in chat. Uh, anti seven, uh, ice storm, uh, a week ago. Yeah, that's that it, it. We're in that season where it's, it's ice storm and kind of snow, kind of rain. Not, not good at all. Uh, let's see. Uh, geeky ran 72 in St. Louis. Oh yeah. I knew it. I knew you guys were getting the weather I'm, I was looking for. 72 is kind of, mm, I, I take a day or two of it, but I, I want fifties. I'm ready for fifties for a while. So I can just keep the windows open. I, I mean, I have my window open right now. It's a little bit different. You know, it's 34 here. Windows open, but only because I have so many lights running right now that it gets kind of warm. Fans on too, so it, it kind of feels like spring in here. Plus, I, I like fresh air. I always have. Always have. Uh, Takano, uh, snow, what's the cap of 66 here in Arizona? Yeah, tell me. Tell me about it. You always have good weather. Good weather. Uh, Italy here. Hey, Richie Sane, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see, JCX Life. I want to try vGPU and Proxmox, uh, but I don't want to give up my 1060 card from the desktop, and so I aren't willing to pay more uh, than what it cost uh, me years ago with the same duplicate card. Ack. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. I, yeah, I saw that in, in Discord this morning um, that you wanted to try vGPU and splitting up your GPU and, and sharing it across um, sharing it across virtual machines. Craft Computing's got an excellent, excellent video on that um, where he talks about it and goes in deep. I actually watched it partly again this morning because I'm like, I kind of need that, but I kind of don't. <laughs> but I kind of want to do it. Um, so, yeah, and it does have some some requirements, and I think you you kind of nailed it on the head. It uh, You don't want to use your 1060 because I think it requires a certain uh, GPU architecture and above to be able to support it. 
Uh, and I think 1060s, at least for the consumer cards, the 10 series is, is like the cutoff. So anything older than that or lower architecture, I should say, uh, isn't going to work. So I, I hear you. I have a, I have a 1050 and a 1660 still in a bin. I feel bad about it, um, but they were upgrades from a long time ago. Uh, I need to use them again. Uh, so I'm, I got I to gotta figure that out. Gotta, I need a GPU uh, workload idea. I already have another GPU, but I, I have like two in a bin. Um, actually... Oh, I, I shouldn't even say this. I have three in a bin. I forgot. I, for, I totally forgot the one before my 3090. So I have 1080, 1660, and a 1050. I feel like a hoarder, but I, I bought these way before everything that's going on. I, pr I promise. Not a hoarder. <laughs> uh, Pizza Geek, uh, let's, go, let's go to Techno Tim for today's uh, weather forecast. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, what's the weather in California right now? I don't know. I, maybe I'll get a green screen one day and, and uh, fill my dream of being a weather person uh, because it, it does sound fun, but I have no idea where to look. I barely know where to look for the stream, let alone having a map behind me and talking about it. <laughs> uh, pain. Yeah, cries. Yeah, I hear you. It stinks. It stinks. Um, Richie Saint, uh, have you ever used Packer in Terraform? Um, not anything more than like a quick demo to do it. Uh, not anything more than just like quick demo playing around, you know, hello world type spin up, you know, uh, a virtual machine really quick. I have it. It sounds, it sounds super interesting. And I love, I love the idea of making anything repeatable, especially infrastructure. Infrastructure is a tough one for me to, to build up and tear down. Obviously, I have a, a lot of virtual machines, uh, and I should should do it a little bit more. I don't know if Terraform is going to be the the tool of choice. I, I know it is, and I know it comes from HashiCorp, and they've got a great suite of tools to do all of that. Um, just I just I just haven't settled on a tool yet. You know, you have you have you, we have options to do it. Um, but haven't played around with it any more than just like, hello world, how does this work? Get the tools installed and let it run. So, um, yeah, thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, GCX Live, my subs got screwed. That's why I had to reset. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, those lights. I'll fix that. I'll fix the other lights later. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nam, Namuzi, uh, what are most people using for GPUs with Proxmox? Mostly Plex transcoding. Um, I think a lot of people find older quadros that work out pretty well. I think people use quadros, uh, one, because they're easier, easy-ish uh, to, to, to pass through. You get, you don't have the, uh, uh, some of the, 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 the restrictions on how many concurrent streams you can actually use uh, uh, with quadros, I think, uh, where consumer cards you kind of do. You can actually lift that restriction too through software. Um, but, but I think a lot of people either use, you know, 10 series cards, uh, I've even seen nine series cards or quadro cards. Um, Hey, real quick. Uh, let's see, uh, note, uh, not best, but try hard <laughs> as a prime sub. Thank you so much. Thanks for spending your prime sub on me. Appreciate it. Uh, also Kino fool. Thanks for the fall. Appreciate it. I don't think I called that one out. Um, but, um, I, I have a quadro, I have a P2200. Uh, I think even older quadros than that will work fine. I did mention that there is the restriction on, on, um, the amount of streams that you can and leverage, uh, with certain cards, but at the same time, you kind of have that restriction anyways, uh, based on the type of card that you're going to use. And it's not, it's not a hard restriction on concurrent streams. It's more of a soft restriction on really how hard can that encoder and decoder work? For a stream, you know, you might not have uh, a, a hard limit of four concurrent streams uh, on a specific card, but your card might not be able to stream five at the same time. So, anyways, um, there's also a great guide out there. If you if you ping me in Discord and I remember, or if I remember before you ping me, there's a great guide on there uh, out there uh, on the interwebs that tells you uh, what card maps to uh, what cards work well for Plex and what the performance you can generally expect from it. How many 4K streams can you run? How many, you know, 2K, 1080 streams, whatever, can you run concurrently and which cards are are, are, are good for that? It's basically mapping a transcoding uh, to, to specific cards. So ping me in Discord. I'll, I'll try to share that link or just Google it. It's out there, but it's it's actually pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Do it. IoT gotcha. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I totally. I did have to run back there and fix the plug. I still don't think I fixed it, but uh, it might be a code. Might be code. Uh, when you got to do live tech support, totally. I totally. Uh, live tech support, I try not to because it's probably boring for most people, but for me, it's it's not boring. Uh, so I, I, I always try to like 
ignore problems and just keep moving. But sometimes, sometimes it's hard for me not to. My OCD kicks in. I'm like, why are those lights still blue right now? They shouldn't be blue. Um, but anyways, I'll fix it. Uh, JCX Life, I want a game slash uh, transcode with a VGPU, but yeah, I have no monies for new cards. Uh, would theft be wrong? Yeah, no, I know that's a joke. I know you wouldn't. Um, yeah, so um, I hear you. I, I, I've kind of, I've gone down that path before where I wanted to game or I wanted to encode and I wanted to do multiple things on one card. This was before Crafts uh, Computing uh, had his, his video come out on VGPUs and splitting it up in Proxmox. I, I just went old fashioned and I ended up uh, installing Plex on the same Windows machine that I was also going to remotely game or encode on too. Is it is it uh, is it cool? No. <laughs> does it work? Heck yeah, it does because it's you know it's a Windows machine that I can do whatever I want to. And so for a while I piled on every every service that I needed that needed uh, GPU encoding or GPU decoding. Uh, either for, for all kinds of stuff, along with I, I wanted to game or I wanted to, uh, to remotely edit some Photoshop stuff. It was there. Uh, so uh, is, it, is it as cool? No, but it still works that way too. Uh, so, I mean, you could, you could go that route, right? I mean, that, that should still work. Doesn't, it's not ideal. It's not cool, <laughs> you know. Uh, but if you have one virtual machine and you only have one card and you can't divide it up, I mean, your options are kind of limited. They're also limited too. Then, if you're gonna do it on Linux, because then, like, yeah, the whole Linux thing. Uh, I guess not the Linux thing. If you're running them in containers, it gets a little more complicated too. Uh, if you're running Plex in a container, it's probably on Linux, which then means you can't run your games unless you're gonna run a full-blown Linux desktop and all the stuff that comes along with that. Uh, but I, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't bat an eye if someone was like, hey, yeah, I have a Windows virtual machine that's running like five things because I have one video card and I can't share it. I'd be like, oh, yeah, you solved it. You figured it out. <laughs> Just steal from Crypto Pros. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm, I'm definitely not hoarding. I'm definitely not hoarding video cards. So that is not me. Uh, let's see. All Swing, uh, I bought a similar patch panel uh, to what you have a while back. Actually, don't know how the ground came. Wait, don't know how to ground it? And don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, Bible thump. Yeah, I, I hear you. Neither do I. <laughs> uh, newsflash, neither do I. No, um, that, that ground cable, uh, when I read the instructions, it just said grounded out to something. I grounded it out to the whole entire rack. Is that right? Probably not. But I saw a screw and I saw one of the little, you know, half wing nuts and I, I screwed it in there because I'm like, well, if it's going to discharge somewhere, it's going to go to here. That's not grounded to anything because that's on wheels. So I probably just created some crazy loop that's going to shock me really bad one day. So don't take advice from me. I don't know where to put it either. I'm in the same boat. But I, I would assume you would have to ground it out to something that's then, you know, grounded out somewhere else and not just the rack itself. Uh, my rack's on wheels. So that, that, that makes it interesting for sure. <laughs> Uh, let's see, JCX Life. Oh, oh man, Cisco time server bugs. Now that takes me back to uni, <laughs> WC. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> uh, maybe just no, uh, maybe just a no NTP. Yeah, for sure, for sure. PC geek. Uh, do we really need uh, NTP on a switch? You, you, you probably don't. Uh, but it could be your NTP server. So I wasn't talking about the client piece. But yeah, I mean, at some point. I, I mean, I guess if you have hardware, you don't, but it's always nice to then like, you know, you know, have checks and balances for it to sync upstream to something else to say, okay, world clock, are you, what time are you? And I'm, you know, might be off by a fraction of a second. So I'm going to adjust accordingly, but uh, that's how I've always done it. I don't know if it's right, uh, but I kind of, you know, I, I trust uh, external hardware clocks too. So that's how I, I have a tiered approach. Clients internally go to my internal NTP server, the NTP server then goes to some other master clock, which should be right. If not, we're in big trouble. Uh, True Blue, 212, thanks for the 100 bits. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for the 100 bits. Uh, Anti7, uh, finally convinced the CFO that I need a Threadripper workstation. Gonna take three months to ship. Awesome. Awesome. Threadripper. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm jealous because I, I, I'm, I'm in that boat uh, where I, I don't need, but I want to build a new machine. Uh, this machine has is, is served me well for like five years, but I'm at the point where it's like, okay, I need more RAM. Like when I edit videos, I have 32 gigs of RAM in here. That sounds great, but really it's not. When you start editing videos and bringing in videos, you just kind of like run out of RAM along with everything else running. Uh, CPU cores, I could use some more. It could be, you know, faster. 
uh, kind of in that same boat. And, uh, you know, I want more M.2 drives for a lot of my temp storage. Anyways, long story short, I'm envious of you. Even if you have to wait three months, it, at least it's coming. <laughs> I have zero plan right now other than a thought and an idea. So uh, let's see. Uh, Richie Saint, the link list of good NVIDIA cards transcoding is pinned to the hardware in Discord. Thank you so much. Yeah, that whole Thank you for pinning that. If someone pinned that, uh, that's exactly what I was talking about. I think you shared it or many people have shared it. It's, it's a great, great link for sure. Uh, so GCX Life, uh, when they set up their NTP servers to point to uh, WizNet by hard coding the IP in the routers. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I don't know what uh, uh, WizNet is, uh, but... But yeah, uh, Richie Saint, uh, I never asked for GPUs. I was talking about Packer and Terraform. Oh, I must have called out the wrong name. Uh, apologize. But I did talk about Packer and Terraform. I haven't done it any more than just Hello World type stuff and understanding how it works. Uh, but I talked about it. So uh, Geeky Rand, Roops, wrong chat, my bad. But still, come, let's talk about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. that was that was him. This is where I keep getting confused. Uh, Riz Mike, uh, Rise Mike, uh, happy birthday. Thanks. Yeah, it was on, it was on Wednesday. Uh, John, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Sup, Tim? How's it going? How's chat? Uh, let's see. Hey, John. Party, party. Uh, Honolulu, Roscoe. Uh, hi, Tim. Thanks a lot for your videos on Athalia and traffic. Really helped me get going. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, uh, I feel like the Athalia piece is pretty far down <laughs> the rabbit hole. It's like you have to first adopt containers, and then on top of that, you have to choose you know, uh, traffic is your reverse proxy. And then on top of that, uh, you have to say then, okay, I want, you know, authentication or authorization uh, or, or a second factor in there. And I want that to be a failure. So that one, those videos are pretty far down the rabbit hole. It's like, it's like Plinko. We're about three quarters of the way down on Plinko on the Price is Right. Uh, and so I'm glad it, it landed in your slot. So, but thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do like it. It's, it's, it's super awesome. Uh, helps out with a lot of things. I need I need some more advanced use cases at home, especially for some of my some of my APIs, uh, because uh, I mean they are secured. But I would love to do something a little bit more fancy with Athalia since I have it here in my environment. So, uh, let's see, Geeky Ran, I could teach you Power CLI. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. You certainly can. Uh, Btwi. Oh man, this is a tough name. Uh, I'm gonna go with Btwi. I'm gonna go with User Max. User Max. Uh, Single workstation, considering Proxmox for daily work along with multiple containers, or should I bite the bullet and purchase a separate server? Current workstation is four cores, 16 gigs, and 500 gig NVMe uh, with a RAID 5, 8 terabyte. Um, that one's tough. That one's tough. Um, uh, I've thought about this many times. A lot of people ask this. A lot of people want to run Proxmox as their main workstation and then, you know, and then run a virtual machine inside of it, but then take advantage of that virtual machine when they boot up. Um, it's a lot of complexity. It's a lot of complexity. It's, it's, it's going to be up to you. I mean, there's going to be a little bit of overhead, right? So if there's always a overhead, small overhead, two to 3% ish, depending on your hypervisor that you just pay, um, uh, may not be important to you. Uh, but then, you know, there, there's going to be lots of pros and cons like, okay, I booted it up and now I got to wait for the hypervisor to come up. Then I have to wait for the virtual machine to come up. Not a huge deal, maybe next to 30 seconds, but there's that too. Uh, and then, you know, the, the more virtual machines you add to that, um, you know, the, the, the slower, uh, if, uh, depending on how uh, your infrastructure is, the slower that your virtual machine is going to be as you use it. Um, so there, there are a lot of things, and I, I've thought about it, and I've, uh, I've had lots of people ask me to the point now where I just might <laughs> put something together on it. Um, but it's, it's really going to be up to you. The, 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 I think the hardest part for me would be, you know, what do you do if something goes wrong? Um, and that's something that I've been kind of noodling on in the back of my head because this comes up quite a bit, you know, and if, if something does go wrong, I mean, your options are get into the terminal, uh, run some terminal commands to then, you know, actually, hey, hey, helpful crypto miner. Thank you for the follow and thank you. Gifted four tier one subs. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Four gifted subs or five. Why did I see four? I saw four. Mm, something was wrong. So five, and I think there was earlier, there was a bug where I said four and I was like, four is such a different number. Maybe it's five. Anyways, thank you so much for the gifted sub. So normal value, uh, TD5150 crypto pod, uh, Nataroni, Nataroni pizza. I like it. Uh, artist draws, uh, enjoy your gifted sub uh, from helpful crypto miners. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Um, anyways, uh, what I was saying about running as your main machine, it, it's going to be tough. It's, it, I, I always fall back to what do I do if something goes wrong? If something does go wrong, then, you know, you're in the terminal troubleshooting unless you install, you know, GNOME or some other, uh, uh, you know, uh, GUI on top of uh, Debian. Um, and and it, uh, I, <laughs> would I ever do it personally? I, I personally wouldn't. But if it's down to, hey, it's either not have a hypervisor and have a hypervisor because I can't buy a dedicated machine, I would say go for it. <laughs> I would say go for it. I mean, me, if I only had one machine and you were in, and it was like, that's all I could do. Um, and I didn't have any other option. Heck yeah, I'd do it. Heck yeah, I'd do it. Uh, I'd at least try it <laughs> to know whether I liked it or not or whether it's going to work out. So no hurt in trying. Just back up your data. But you're just going to flip everything upside down now. Um, you know, and I, I mentioned there, there are other ways to, to, to um, have virtual machines other than uh, a dedicated hypervisor too. If you're on Windows, you you know you have Hyper-V, you have that at your disposal that you could use uh, on that machine. Um, if you're uh, if you don't want to use Hyper-V, you have VirtualBox, and you have you know VirtualBox pretty much, or any other uh, type two. I want to say a type one. I can't remember the type, but a different type software-based hypervisor that you could use uh, on your machine to get almost the same effect. And then you can run them on demand rather than saying, okay, this thing's a hypervisor first, and my desktop is just a client on there, it's, it's, it, it turns it upside down where it then says, okay, every, every virtual machine is now, now running on top of my host, which is my desktop. So lots of options there, lots of options there to kind of, so I disabled sync on the switch through the web GUI and now it doesn't do it as often, but it's still requesting the server every minute or so. That's pretty often. Unsure why, since the time sync is, uh, is off, not like this. Uh, then I tried to change the DNS servers, but it doesn't allow me to remove the DNS server assign via DHCP and it sets the DNS servers to be the highest priority. So it goes Pi-hole, Cloudflare DNS, Google DNS, and there's no way to change that from the looks of it. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. And it's going to be tough too, because they're, 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 you know, they're not released depending on the switch. I mean, that switch is probably deprecated. So there aren't any firmware updates. Yeah, that's tough. That is tough. Um, I, I mean, you can always, like I said, like if you can't disable a setting, you could always throw it into a black hole, just something that doesn't exist or an IP on your network that is inaccessible or is it is accessible uh, on your subnet, but nothing's there. Just send it into a black hole. Uh, Jason Lambert. Uh, hi, Tim. Uh, do you use Unraid? Uh, if not, why not? Have you? <laughs> uh, lots of questions in there. Do I use Unraid? No. Uh, have I? No. Uh, why not? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think originally when I was looking for a hypervisor slash NAS slash my new server architecture, this was a couple of years ago because I've been doing it for years and I thought, yeah, it's time for a change. You know, I did look at it. I did consider it. I do like I, I do like a lot of the concepts that are there, especially when it comes to storage expansion, you know, super nice compared to ZFS. Um, but I just, I never, I, I almost downloaded the trial and I just, I didn't. I, I found uh, Proxmox and I looked at Open Media Vault and I looked at TrueNAS as possibly running my virtualization. And that's where I went because um, because for me it was, I, I, I needed a new hypervisor. I was running uh, an older version of ESXi um, and I've run uh, Hyper-V in the past too. Um, and I got to a point where I needed a new hypervisor. So I started looking at hypervisors first. And you know, and 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 and, and true NAS is is it, I'm sorry, uh, uh, <laughs> Unraid is many things, um, but I don't feel like it's a hypervisor first, and so that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted a, a, a hypervisor first, and then I'll figure out storage and everything else from there. It's it's great product. If you need it all in one, it's super fantastic. Uh, but no, I, I I have I I know it's great because a lot of people use it. I see a lot of great content coming out for that platform. I see a lot of code uh, being shipped for people who want to uh, spin up all the kinds of containers on it. Um, and so I know there's a, a good community around it. It looks awesome, but I haven't used it. Um, Gian, I'm going to go with Gian. Gian, uh, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, JCX Life, uh, how do you get your servers to rack so smoothly? Oh, I think I read this one already, unless I went back there. But <laughs> sorry for repeating my message. It's getting lost. I have I have Rails. I'll, I'll send you the Rails. I'll post the Rails in Discord. If not, go to kit.co slash technotim. 
kit.co. I'm do it later. Don't do it now. Or open it in a new tab. Uh, still hang out here. But kit.co slash uh, Techno Tim, you'll see all the gear I recommend. Those rails are in a few of my kits there. Uh, let's see. Impact. Uh, Synology makes everything easy. I think my ESXi install might be corrupt because I've been having other issues. Yeah, yeah. Synology is, 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 makes things easy, period. Yeah, that, true statement. True statement. <laughs> Uh, JCX, Cisco servers have a Cisco server. Cisco has a history of querying time servers naughtily. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of things do. A lot of things do, and you don't realize it until you start looking at your DNS and you're like, why is my TV like querying something like 50 billion times in one hour? And you're like, okay, you're going, that's all getting blocked. <laughs> um, uh, GM Robo, uh, the Twidget got all the messages from the beginning of the stream, though I don't know. Oh, yeah, limited messages. Yeah, you got it. You guys got it. That is exactly right. Uh, High Tech Panda, uh, I just picked up a APC UPS and setting it up, setting up nut. Nice. 100 times, thank you for your video on that. So valuable. Thank you. That one's tough. Uh, I think you... You, you, you earn some specific badge if you, if you get through that video. One, because it's super long, and two, it's just it's it's pretty complex. And I don't know if that's just a sign of uh, how how many devices they support, or if that's a sign of just the the times and the stack that it was built on. Uh, but it's super flexible, super complex, but also really awesome once you get it working. Okay, uh, JCX Life, I. Bought proper. I bought uh, the proper rack rails, but uh, yeah, definitely need to get a good shove. I wonder if there's a way they can be lubricated. Although I don't want oil near valuable equipment. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they 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 usually have, you know, some gear grease should be fine because I think most of them have the little wheel in there that probably has ball bearings. I don't know how it works, but most of them just have that sliding wheel, uh, and then they lock when they come out. I mean, I I don't think lubing it with with like gear grease, not like you know. <laughs> motor oil or something you know the right type of grease should be fine should be fine crack kitty dude thank you so much <laughs> cheer 200 bits uh why because tim and the community are awesome i totally agree so how uh with the community piece uh but i i, I I'm, I'm biased if you're talking about i'm awesome no i'm kidding um so how about another again thank you 100 again thank you so much dude thank you so much 200 bits thanks man appreciate it appreciate it um uh read that one uh let's see uh bigsby hey tim how's it going uh let's see cyber Knight. uh bazinga uh techno tim uh storage monitors and logging and not having 20 vms <laughs> yeah i i don't know anything about ba bazinga that's a that's a new name for me new name for me i need to look into it uh jcx uh wanting to test wanting to test a thing just build a vm uh, I've wanted to, I've been well into VMs for years, just like 2009, and the support has gotten even better. I totally agree. I totally agree. Uh, uh, Chubakawa, how's it going? Uh, Risa, Prime, eight months, two months streak. How's it going? Thank you for all the pull requests and helping out with one of my open source projects. Thank you so much. And how's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you. Chubakawa, or Cho. <laughs> it's Japanese. I know. I get it now. <laughs> I was like, I should have known it was Japanese and I was pronouncing it wrong. But thank you so much uh, again. And thanks for the pull requests and helping out with Little Link Server. Super, it's been super helpful having someone else like pick up some of that workload. So I appreciate all the pull requests. So thank you. Uh, Mafni, who, who is Mafin? Yeah, Mafni, who Mafin, Mafin, who is Mafni? Yeah, I, <laughs> I uh, meant to be who, but yeah, Mafin, 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 Mafni. Okay. Uh, John, uh, questions spark more questions for me. I, I totally agree. Questions, I, I totally agree. Questions do spark more questions in general, uh, or lead me down another path or help me get things answered. And I think you're referring to Discord. So yeah, I, I totally agree. I love it when people ask questions because it, it's, it's also a good pulse to see what people are thinking about, working on, or having troubles with too. Uh, JCX Life, uh, I was the same with my Windows 98 SE product serial. I can rattle it off even now. Less useful these days, LOL. Yeah. So, uh, so I was rattling off the, Mike, the code to Mike Tyson on Mike Tyson's punch out. I still remember it. Uh, and you remember yours from Windows 98 SE. I used to remember one of my Windows XP one. Like if I saw the first couple of letters, I knew the rest. Because the Windows XP one, I, you know, you hand type those things. They still haven't figured that out. You know, Windows has not figured out or anything really. It's like this whole like analog, like you boot from something and you need to type in a product key. Windows for sure. It's still typing in a product key. Uh, obviously now you can bypass it and then you can do it later. 
but it, it, it just, it, it, it's tough. It's tough. So yeah, I, I typed in the Windows XP one, I, I bet uh, 500 times, minimum, minimum, for sure. <laughs> Uh, JCX life, no doubt. Uh, we all have electric, uh, eclectic knowledge and benefit the larger groups. I totally agree. Uh, anti seven Ventoy's uh, fantastic. I totally agree. I totally agree. I'm a huge fan. I, I use it all the time. I have one sixty. I think it's a 64 gig, uh, USB device. It's actually plugged into that guy back there. Uh, and it's the one I have And it, it. Like I said, I have 15 to 20 ISOs on it. I just keep putting more. I even duplicated one the other day. And I was just like, whatever <laughs> I'll delete it someday. That's, that's the best part. Agree, love Ventoy. I totally agree. JCX, I still need to write down a guide for PXE or Pixie booting uh, since a few folks have asked for me and how to set mine up on the Discord, uh, but finding time. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, Pixie boot uh, for me was magic. I remember doing it for the first time when I worked at this hospital or health system. I was like, this is so magic. I, I And I thought like one day I'll have Pixie boot at home and I'll be able to image machines at home. And it'll be great because before that I was using Ghost and, you know, you have a Ghost boot drive and it would listen. You set up client server or whatever. But once I got into Pixie boot, that's what, there was no stopping me. And I thought, man, once I get Pixie boot at home, like I, I have made it. <laughs> that was so long ago. Still waiting. Still waiting. Um, GM Robo, uh, Techno Tim, yeah, easy for you. Uh, but the combined knowledge of the Discord couldn't solve any of my problems. <laughs> why can, why must I be cursed? Well, let me know what those problems still are and throw it out there. I'm sure, I'm sure there, there are definitely uh, people who who can figure it out for sure. Um, and I, I think you mean with Ventoy, and if if it is the persistent, that is not. E if you mean persisting to Ventoy, not easy. And I'm not saying that's easy at all because I haven't figured it out. Uh, but I'm saying like if you just need to format. Uh, a Ventoy disk. I have one, I have a video on it, but two, it should be just formatting that disk and then it's copying and pasting your ISOs on there. It gets a little confusing with like, cause sometimes when you boot your machine will say, do you want to do the UEFI boot of Ventoy or do you want to do the legacy BIOS boot of Ventoy? And I'm just kind of like, eh, I'll use the legacy one maybe. I don't know what it means for, uh, uh, you know, Ventoy to be able to boot to UEFI, but then install something legacy BIOS. Or vice versa, if that's even a thing. I don't know. Works for me. It hasn't worked for me before, but I, that's the one confusing part for me, for sure. Uh, yo, yo. Uh, Techno Tim, uh, how do you decide what to put in Docker and what to put in K3S? Yeah, this is a great question. Uh, I have this battle inside of my head every day. I had it this morning. I have it I have it every, every single day of my life since I've started doing this. How do I decide what needs to be in Docker and what I should put into Kubernetes? Um, because, because early on in this journey, deciding on what I should containerize and what I should virtualize was, was easy for me. It was easy. It was, it was a clear line. There was a clear path. You know, it was, a, does it require specific hardware? You know, this list goes on and on and on. Is there a container for it? That's usually was my question. I'd ask myself, and if there was, I'd make it work <laughs> right or wrong. <laughs> I would make it work. But, but the, the, the question about like, when should this thing go into Kubernetes uh, versus just running as a Docker container is less clear to me. It's less clear to me. And I, I, I had this discussion in my head this morning and I, I do it every other day, every other day. And I'll, I'll, I'll kind of describe. So I, I, I still have things that are containerized on Docker, Docker roaming. And I do that uh, one because it scares me to go <laughs> into Kubernetes and I'll explain. Um, so one of my Docker only hosts is, is handles all of my, my, uh, databases. So I have Mongo there, I have Postgres there, I have MySQL there, and all of my databases are there. And I would love to have HA or cluster databases sometimes. So I, then I go down this path. I go, okay, well, is there a Kubernetes operator for Postgres? Yes, there is. Cool. So I could throw this inside of Kubernetes and get HA databases for free. If I use a Kubernetes operator. I get backups then for free. I get like logging and metrics and shared storage for free because if I throw it in my Kubernetes uh, cluster, but then I start to worry like, okay, like, am I like creating like kind of inception? I've created inception a few times. I usually don't like it when there's anything inception. And when I mean inception, it's like something inside of the cluster is required then for the cluster to start up. Um, like if I put my DNS inside of Kubernetes, that would really be bad. Uh, I don't know what would happen, uh, but I don't want to find out. Um, and so I, I, I keep going back to, okay, does this thing need high availability? That's kind of what my, what, what, what now what, what, what the question is I ask myself is, do I need high availability? Everybody's going to say yes. Everybody's going to say, yeah, yeah, of course you do. Of course you do. 
Um, but it's not as clear as as just asking that question because it could be a couple of things. Like a lot of people will say, like, "Hey, should I should I throw Plex in Kubernetes?" You can, you can, and it'll work. Um, but you're gonna put a lot of effort and a lot of work. Hey, Cyber Knight, thanks for the bits, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you so much. But you're gonna put a lot of work into figuring out. Okay, well, um, how do I get all of my Plex mounts? Uh, for all of my media mounted in Kubernetes. And there, there, there are ways to do that. There are ways to do that. NFS client provisioner, but then you're using a persistent volume claim within Kubernetes. Then you got to copy or symlink or figure out some hack to then get your media inside of that persistent volume claim. Or you could do it with Longhorn or any other block storage, but that gets super weird because now you have block storage that's floating around in Kubernetes that is also your media that's probably not the right place for, you know, 20 terabytes of, of, of your movie or media collection. So it gets really tough. And I, I ask myself this question all the time. I, I still don't have a great answer. Um, and so I feel like right now I'm, I'm frozen. You might be frozen too. I'm frozen. Like, I'm like, I, I want to move my databases inside of Kubernetes so I get all the things I talked about. But at the same time, like, I don't want my databases ever to go down. Not that they don't ever go down now. If I reboot the virtual machine uh, that's running Docker only and that has my databases on it, things go down. Nothing, nothing that requires a database even works anymore until it comes back up. So I don't, I don't have a good decision tree for this. And, I, and maybe I need to put together some kind of decision tree. And I, I've still been, you know, just noodling on this. Like I said, th this morning I was like gun ho. I'm like MongoDB, uh, you, uh, I'm going HA. And how am I going to get HA? I'm throwing you inside Kubernetes. I'm using the MongoDB, you know, Kubernetes operator. I get HA for free and I get all this stuff for free. And then I backed out. And I've done this like so many times because I I, I, I just don't know if that's the right thing to do. And, in, in, you know, and DBAs are going to say, absolutely not. It's not going to be the right thing to do. But at the same time, like I'm going to lean into, you know, a battle tested, you know, uh, architecture, which is Kubernetes that pretty much runs the world <laughs> right now. Um, and, and there are operators for them to help me get high availability, to help me get backups and to help me do a lot of the things that typically would be really hard to do in Kubernetes anyways. So I don't have a good answer for that. I, I don't, I don't, this is the internal struggle. Like I said, I, I thought about it this morning, every now and then in discord, I'll say, yeah, I, I think I'm going to Postgres inside of Kubernetes with the Postgres operator. And then I back out cause I'm, I get, I get a little bit scared and I'm not going to lie. Um, so I think, uh, I, I, what I usually ask myself is do, do I really need HA? Was this thing really meant to run in Kubernetes? You know, Plex arguably it wasn't. Um, and, and another thing you have to think about with, with containers in general too, you know, one of the benefits of running containers in Kubernetes is that you can scale them. And so if you're running a stateful, a stateful pod, uh, that is stateful, that has persistent disk. You know, sometimes that's a, that's a, uh, I don't want to say a red flag, but that's a good signal to say, okay, if I can only run one of these, um, and because it, it's, it's very stateful and it needs persistent disk mounted to it, um, this is probably a good candidate if I have a Docker only host to, to run there. And I, 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 <laughs> I don't always do that. I don't always do that because I want all the other benefits of Kubernetes. Um, and, and so maybe that's not even a great signal anyways. So anyways, I, I don't have a great answer for this. I, I hope to some point put together some kind of decision tree uh, to, to, to figure this out um, and, and noodle on it a little bit more and have some better, uh, I guess, guidance on it. Because I, uh, they're, they're, you know, it, right now it's a case by case basis. Uh, I try to put every single thing I possibly can inside of Kubernetes. Um, and I know a lot of my videos you see, uh, it, it, it's a lot of Docker um, and that's, for a good reason, because it's a good entry point into containerization and it'll work. And if you understand Kubernetes, it's easy to just say, okay, I'm going to translate this thing to Kubernetes. You know, my secrets are just a list and environment variables are a list and my secrets are in Kubernetes. Uh, it's super easy to do if you understand Kubernetes. Um, but you know, I, I go through this all the time where it's, I, I don't have a great answer. The quantum penguin resub tier one, 14 months, dude, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anyways. Um, I, I, you know, um, I don't, I, don't have a great answer for that. Um, uh, maybe someday in the future I will. <laughs> you could see like my internal struggle right now uh, because I, I uh, like I said, I uh, asked myself this morning, same question. Yesterday, same question. Day before, same question. Like, how do I know 
uh, when to put something in Kubernetes. And right now I'm kind of in like the shoehorn approach where I'm going to make it run in Kubernetes. I'm going to shoehorn it in until it doesn't feel good. And when would it not feel good? Oh, well, the service. So another thing, so, so with Kubernetes, you have resource limits too. Not something you even think about in Docker, right? Your resource limits are as much RAM and as much CPU as it could possibly have until you basically DOS yourself, right? Right. Um, you know, if one process spins out of control and it uses all cores, 100% CPU, nothing else works. Well, in Kubernetes, you have resource limits. And Kubernetes is pretty smart about scheduling things. It, it basically pay, plays Tetris. And it says, hey, this node over here has some available free space. I'm going to plug you right into there, right? And so now he's pretty full. So the next time a new node comes up, uh, or a new container workload comes up, and you say, hey, Kubernetes deploy, it's going to say, well, that one's pretty full, so I'm going to move you and plug you down over here. Um, and that's obviously if you have resource limits set up and, and you have these constraints in place. Um, but what Kubernetes will also do is evict those pods that are that are noisy neighbors, that are exceeding their, their resource limits. And so that's where it gets tricky for me too, because like if my database is pegged at 100%, is it going to get evicted? What's going to happen? Is it going to spin up somewhere else? And if it does, like that, you know, that might be some downtime. And obviously that's probably figured out with, with some of the operator stuff. Uh, but there are some workloads that I don't want Kubernetes to ever evict. Like I don't want them to stop, you know, and if I ran my right now, I move my Mongo DB that's in a container inside of Kubernetes and didn't set up any resource limits and, you know, just, just ran it as a normal container. There's a point in time where that, that container could get evicted and I, I don't want that to happen. So there's a lot, there's a lot of planning that has to go up front. So those are the things I worry about too, you know, is, 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 you know, is, is it the right choice for a lot of things? Like I said, I'm going to shoehorn, I'm going to keep shoehorning stuff in there because I want one place for all my stuff. But at the same time, uh, with that comes, you know, a uh, great responsibility of figuring out all the stuff I haven't figured out yet. Uh, cause you know, any, 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 yeah, yeah. Any demo on the web is going to say, yeah, kube control deploy this. And it's going to be the most simple YAML file ever. It's not going to have any resource constraints or limits or reservations. And you're going to deploy it. And one day you're going to have to figure all this out again. And so I totally get it. Why some of those don't, don't mention that up front, but it's things you got to think about. Uh, PC geek, uh, just plug and play for me. If it don't work, it's probably, uh, the flash drive. Yeah. Oh, so going back to Vento, I totally agree. Uh, but then why does the flash drive work when Etcher and Rufus, uh, oh, I see what's going on. So you can't boot from it. I think that's the problem is that you can't boot from it. So yeah, um, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, I have Vento installed on mine. I'm updated over the last year. Every time there's an update, I go and update it and it, it kind of runs. Throw it in Discord, put your model down and let, let's let's figure it out. Maphne, snowing here. I think it's, if they. well, they say now. I, I don't want to look outside. They say now, but it might be, might be thunder snow slash rain. <laughs> uh, let's see, JCX Life uh, might be the USB stick. I totally agree, it might be that. But then they were mentioning that it works with, with Rufus and everything else, so. Let's see, uh, gonna look for mentions. JCX, uh, uh, shame I can't exotic pole <laughs> dance anymore. Make an interesting distraction kick. Are you still the mall? Okay, I clicked on the wrong. No, I know, I know you're just kidding. I know you're just kidding. Uh, let's see, oh man, so, see so much spam. It's so hard to, to see the spam in here. Uh, let's see, hi, uh, not the best, but try hard. All right, I like it. Uh, Hi, longtime follower. Benefited a lot from your videos. Uh, Prime is the best, uh, the least I can do to offer right now. Thank you so much. You don't need to do anything. Just being here, just watching my video, giving it a thumbs up, maybe writing a comment and share it with someone is way more than I can ever ask anyone to do. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit over. Okay, I'm going to look for mentions or something similar um, uh, just to make sure I didn't uh, gloss over anyone who is looking for me specifically. Going to look for mentions real quick. Uh, it's kind of I'm at 15k points. Uh, I want to see what Tim has in store. So this is <laughs> so so this is defeat. Yeah, it's kind of is an, so. Another thing I keep thinking about is what am I going to do for 10k points? I have two big ideas. One big idea I don't think I can do, and it takes modifying this room. That might be a little far. There might be stuff I can do with code though. Still so. Uh, hang in there. I just saw something the other day on YouTube that I thought would be interesting would be the 10k point reward. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, let's see. Uh, Daxius, uh, do you know of a place where to get some project ideas? General computer science? 
No, m most of my ideas come from, uh, to be honest, come from, from YouTube, because uh, I'm on there so much. Um, most of them come from there, um, or blogs I follow, or people who I know who write things, or perusing uh, GitHub every now and then. GitHub, uh, at least the app, has a discovery method built in where you can see some of the top projects that are going on. Um, if you're in general computer science, some of them may or may not be uh, interesting to you, uh, but that's that's usually my go-to. Uh, GitHub, YouTube, and blogs. Um, you ground it to the earth usually. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ticano, uh, see the thing with the grounding cable you have to ground it to the earth so it opens up. Logical option is to put your network rack outside and drive a grounding rod into the dirt. And then, yeah, yeah. So I, funny, I have a grounding rod in my basement, but I kind of hacked it off because it was in the way. <laughs> Maybe I should have attached it there <laughs> for sure. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to look for mentions because I know we're, I know we're running late. I know a lot of people have a lot of things to do today. So, um, uh, lacerated, lacerated digits. Uh, anyone have some soundproofing ideas for loud servers in the garage? New super micro server with six by 16 terabyte is really loud. Uh, if it's in, yeah, I, I don't, it's gonna, it, it's either going to be foam or it's going to be like building off, uh, physically separating that server from everything else. Some people might have some more ideas. Fortunately, mine's in a basement. That's kind of like used to be a closet slash grow room, <laughs> not my grow room, previous owner's grow room. <laughs> uh not really maybe but um so i'm pretty fortunate mine's down there mine's not too loud um but at the end of the day then i can put up uh some sound uh dampening if i if i want to foam foam will go a long way with that to stop echoes from bouncing and kind of absorb that sound and also reflect it in different directions uh but let's see all right gonna look for mentions gonna look for mentions yeah there we go um uh, or interesting, uh, f uh, on uh, DS. Uh, I saw you on YouTube and I think you make a very fresh new content. Thank you. Uh, very, uh, didactic and practical. Thank you. Uh, and above all techies as we like, <laughs> and above all, I don't think I'm above all, but thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. I'm, I am looking for mentions now. This tool right here doesn't have the grace way to highlight mentions. Um, let's see. Um, Techno Tim, uh, isn't there isn't there an option in Kubernetes to say this process container is high priority? Don't evict it. I kind of do that with the CPU scheduler and Poxbox mission critical stuff. Yeah, I mean there there are a lot of flags in Kubernetes to basically say don't evict or uh, we prefer you not to evict this. And you could even go as far as creating stateful sets and so that one is running on every machine. You can go pretty far, and absolutely, you can you can basically say. Hey, there needs to be a minimum of one of these running at all times, right? Um, but then you, the, but then you get into that snafu where I was talking about, where like, hey, you can only run one, um, and sometimes when you replace that one, you got to take the existing one down to spin up the other one, especially if it's mounted storage or ports you're using. So it, it gets really weird. But yeah, absolutely, there are ways around it. I'm, I'm just saying that like. There's a lot of configuration you have to put in place to actually make sure it's right. Because um, even I have some limited downtime, like when my Proxbox backup runs, I noticed that I have a small blip of, of downtime. And I think that's because uh, I don't have things tuned as well as I should be. Because uh, timeouts are kind of long in Kubernetes too for checking health checks. I mean, you got to set up health checks, right? <laughs> health checks, you know, to make sure your services are still running. Uh, so the list goes on and on and on of things to make sure you're running uh, containers that are highly available, especially at home. And these are some of the things that I, I don't necessarily think about until I until I start doing them or running into problems. So I want to make sure that uh, that uh, before I move some of my additional containers there, that that I'm, I'm ready for it. Because database is one that I'm kind of like, works good enough for now. I need to move into Kubernetes at some point. I don't know if that means today. <laughs> and then like this morning, I sit down, I'm like, it means today. And then I look at the documentation, I'm like, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Anyways, hey guys, I'm to the end of the comments. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I, um, to kind of, uh, there's one where he mentioned me, but uh, had, a little, had a little fight over light and dark mode. I, I appreciate it. Thanks for spending those points. Uh, but thank you so much for for being here today. Thanks for for tuning in. Sorry if I rambled about Kubernetes for too long, but uh, these are some of the internal struggles that I I have. And so if you're if you're feeling this and you're new to Kubernetes, don't worry. I have these same uh, questions going through my head. As soon as I have uh, a better better guidance and, uh, and 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 make some kind of decision tree where it actually makes sense, uh, where you can say you know if you're doing this, do this, and 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 vice versa. If you're not doing this, you shouldn't do this. 
I'll share it as soon as I've I figured it out. So I appreciate it. Um, if uh, if you want to continue the conversation, we're we're all on Discord. So most of us are on Discord. There's a Discord links. Uh, if you do exclamation point Discord, and I think they're down there. People have been posting them in there. Absolutely join the Discord. I would love for you to be there. We talk about all kinds of tech stuff. We talk about questions people have. Uh, a lot of people lurk and then come out of the woodworks and 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 answer a lot of questions too. I love it. Um, a lot of our questions are answered by a lot of new people too, which is also awesome too. So it's, it's, it's really a community of people helping people and, uh, and, and, and again, very helpful and welcoming and kind people. And it's, I, I say it all the time, but I'm, I'm so, uh, thankful that I've, I've managed to find uh, a community of people interested in what I'm interested in and that they're also so darn nice and helpful. So I appreciate it. Um, you can find me there on Discord uh, or on Twitter or wherever you want. Um, if you have any questions, throw them out there, uh, and I'll, I'll try to look at it. But please know that uh, most of the people on Discord know a heck of a lot more than me about a heck of a lot more stuff. So so I'll, I'll try to answer if I can. But most likely, uh, someone else has a better answer than me. <laughs> so anyways, uh, thank you so much. I will be back next Saturday on Twitch. Uh, I, I will have something out. I'm... I'm <laughs> kind of dedicating to this now, but I'll have something out this week that I've been working on and probably involves that server back there. Uh, if I can, if I can wrap up my thoughts about it, uh, and, and document it and I'll share it with you then. So have a good rest of the weekend. Um, have a, have a lovely Saturday or Sunday. If, if you're way out East, um, enjoy the, the semi better, the better weather we're having and, uh, yeah, take care folks. Be good to each other. <laughs>